Death Talk, Episode 9. My name is Rich, and I have a few people here with me today. Caleb, hello. Hey, Rich. Casey, Casey, you're back from tour. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm back. Good to see you, or good to hear good you. To, good to hear you. <laughs> and Mark. What's up? <laughs> that soothing voice is back. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so we have a lot to talk about today because uh uh yeah we actually got a lot of questions so thanks everyone for uh emailing us and tweeting us and uh, i think everyone likes the the hashtag ask death talk so thing we're doing so we'll continue doing that but um let's get right into it um just a few uh, one thing to follow up on from last podcast uh we talked a lot about the time that we do pre-orders um and i did forget to mention trey actually reminded me to uh, mention this in the, in the new one, in the, in the new episode of the podcast, that uh, we, one of the reasons we launch at midnight as well is to align with some of the other people that are doing pre orders. So, specifically, iTunes. iTunes launches at midnight on Eastern Standard Time. So, we want to make sure that our pre orders go up at the same time as well. So, that's just a little bit of follow up that um, I wanted to stick in there as well. Uh, so let's move on though. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, we got a few things happening at, uh, at the label this week. So, uh, we want to talk about it. So Mark, why don't you talk about some of the records that we, uh, just announced. Okay. Yeah, cool. So we just announced two releases coming out on March 10th. The first one is a split between self-defense family and creative adult. That's a seven inch that will be coming out through death wish and run for cover records. The songs are awesome. We're all really excited for that to come out. And another one coming out on the same day is going to be a 7-inch between Self-Defense Family and Touche Amore. This is a collaborative 7-inch that the both bands recorded at Studio 4 with Will Yip. And all the songs were written together, and Jeremy and Patrick are both singing on the tracks. It's really exciting and really cool. I think they did an awesome job. And I'm really excited for everyone to hear that. And I just wanted to remind you that March 10th is also the day that the new Harm's Way LP is coming out, and that's called Rust. So I know they just filmed a music video recently, so everyone should be on the lookout for that. Everyone should be on the lookout for new songs for all those releases, and keep on the lookout for pre-order soon. Uh, just lots of exciting stuff going on in the Deathwish world. Yes, March is going to be a uh, very busy time for us here. Uh, we have a yeah. lot of things coming out that month, so... Uh, if you go to deathwishinc.com slash releases, you'll see all the upcoming releases. And if they have street dates, they'll be listed uh, under the records there. So just make sure you go there and uh, take a look and see what's coming out. So we have uh, we have a busy, busy time ahead of us. I guess we could we could talk about Cursed, right? Because that's announced on the website. We I don't think we've mentioned that at all in the podcast. We haven't. It 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 uh it, it did just get announced actually that uh okay that that we have a street date for that. So that's March 24th. Uh Yeah, we're reissuing Cursed, Cursed 2. Two yeah. If you remember 2 years ago, I think or a year and a half ago, we reissued Cursed 1. I think uh there's still plans to do the third one and put them all together someday, but Curse 2 will be coming out March 24th, so once again, oh, pre-orders will be soon for that too, I guess. Along with another Chris Callahan uh band, um Burning Love, the Burning Love 7 inch is coming out March 24th as well. Oh, so cool, yeah, we talked about that when that first got announced. Yeah, so uh again, yeah, we have a lot of records coming out in March, so uh very exciting, very exciting times here. So, um Thanks, Mark, for telling us about some of the news that happened this week. You got it. Yeah. Uh, what do we? Uh, some cool things. We did some cool things this weekend. Uh, who was? Uh, we we were all there, right? We did went to the uh, B nine uh, yeah. flea market. Yep. Everyone have a good time. Oh yeah. What did everyone buy? Yeah, it seemed uh, lots of <laughs> lots of fun. It was uh, it was really busy when I got there. You could you could barely barely even park. There was so many people there, which was great. Um, lots. It of, was really busy, like almost all day. Oh yeah, yeah. I was only there for like a couple hours, but I I did see. Uh, I like the guy that was selling uh, guitar pedals. Like yeah. people were like trying. I talked to him. That was kind I of talked cool. to him for a while. He was really cool. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, it was uh, I didn't actually see, I didn't get to see too much. It was what uh, were they like custom? He had a lot of just boutique like, uh, pedals, and I was asking him if he made any himself. I don't know. Maybe he does 
but he didn't have any that were like for sale there. I think that they're just a retailer for a lot of cool like boutique brands, but I don't, I don't know. It was really cool. I have like, I had the magnet somewhere that said his name, the brand's name on it, but I don't know. They had some cool stuff. If I had the money to drop, I would have probably bought something. Yeah. Also right next to uh, the death wish table was a candle company called Wick and stitch. Uh, they were selling really cool scented candles. that are soy candles. I ended up buying one called tea and berries. I was told it was one of their best sellers. It smells really, really, really good. So uh, look up wickenstitch.com. Uh, they have a website where they can let you know where they're selling their candles next on the North Shore and things like that. So, yeah, that was really cool. Well, there you go. There you go. And we had a table there. So uh, we had records and some a uh, little bit of merch, a little bit of uh, – do we, did we have uh, like patches and things like that or – didn't have patches. We did have mugs. Mugs seem oh, to be a pretty big hit. All right, all right, cool. So yeah, um, that and they're gonna do it again, right? Yeah. When we talked to Chris, he said that it went well enough that he said maybe like in June or something. Wait a little bit. All right, cool. Yeah. So if you're um, if you live in like the Boston area or you know New Hampshire, you know around there, uh, we uh, they have their flea, they have their flea market in Peabody, Massachusetts. So um, be on the lookout for more information. There'll probably be another one soon. And there's they're, a ton of labels. They're trying there. to they're trying to do stuff in their warehouse like just every month, like different shit. I guess in March they're doing like a comedy night. I think Alcoa is in the dude from Make Doing Men's playing next month. Cool. Yeah, yeah. There was a ton of labels there too. So like Bridge Nine, Triple B, Painkiller, Six Feet Under, obviously us. Um, did I miss anyone? Tor Johnson was there, right? Reed was selling his photos. Oh, yeah, Reed Haythcock, yeah. Failure recording. Oh, yeah, failure recording. <laughs> okay. But I, I don't know. My favorite part of it was people selling their personal collections. Like, I bought some records off of Reed at very reasonable prices that were sick that I've been looking for. But I think that was the coolest part. What did everyone else buy? Did you buy anything, Rich? Um, no, but I did, I did, uh, <laughs> I did get a, uh, polar seltzer water for free oh true i I, I, I didn't end up i ended up talking to i just ended up talking to so many people there and like catching up that i actually like forgot to like actually buy something (laughs) because i was like just like talking to so many people and like seeing people that i haven't seen in quite a while so um i should actually buy something next time and i uh forgot (laughs) shout out to uh polar that was that was cool they're just handing out free seltzer all day so that was that was very cool um we don't have this in the notes, but I actually wanted to ask Casey too. Uh, you're back from tour. Um, how did everything go? You're out on tour with your band, Youth Funeral. Yeah, actually, it went really well. Uh, I expected Screamo tour to be miserable because that's not, there's not really much of a scene for that anymore. But it was actually really cool. There were a couple shows that were like duds as far as us playing and like it being ill attended but it's just kind of to be expected in the midwest not so much that we didn't play very well but more so that there's not a great scene for that type of music but it was cool uh richmond was probably my favorite one of my favorite places to play and they have like a lot of cool bands down there doing similar stuff to what we're doing and then chicago was really sick too we played with our friend's band lord snow which is probably one of the better current screamo bands um and they were one of i love those, that band yeah I, you got, glad I got they're sick their guitarist nico is super nice and he also is like a wizard because he was playing these crazy things not like inaccessible weird like nerd riffs but like really cool like riffs for like screamo music and he was playing it with like a classical pick i guess that wraps around your thumb and he was finger picking everything and it was so fast that's and cool it was amazing and i don't know they were really good but overall the tour was cool didn't get robbed this time saw a lot of friends bought some cool stuff i went and saw inherent vice when i was in pittsburgh which was a cool movie. Oh, how was that it was sick i am not familiar with thomas pinchon's writing or his books but apparently a couple of my friends who went with me had read the book before they saw the movie and knew what to expect but i guess he kind of like tries to 
um, introduce a ton of characters and there's a lot of plot lines and it becomes really confusing and disorienting, which I hated halfway through the movie until I realized as they kept introducing characters that it was kind of intentional. But it was cool if you have the patience to sit through a two and a half hour movie that's kind of testing your patience. But I don't know. I, I liked it a lot. But Tor was cool. <laughs> And Casey, nice. I'm, I'm going to take a minute to uh, just plug your record because oh. um, that's coming out on uh, January 27th. So you cool. can order it now from uh, our store, store.deathwishing.com. And Deathwish Direct is doing exclusive distribution on it. So we it's coming out on 12 gauge. So we work with 12, 12 gauge. And uh, yeah, so pick it up. If, you, uh, if you, you're a buyer for a record store, hit us up. We'll... Uh, We'll get you some copies. It's real good. I like it a lot. Thanks. You're I, a good. You're a good, good musician <laughs> guy. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty psyched on that record. Sick. Cool. <laughs> cool. Um. So, that out of the way. Um. Actually, we're going to go back to Casey because he's going to do uh, some uh, cool new tunes. And uh, Mark, we did get a request from someone. We'll, we'll read the email later, but they did request that you actually uh, sing the cool new tune song. They want it live. Um, I don't know how you feel about that, but what do you think? Cool new tunes! <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Thanks. Such a Thanks, Mark. Beautiful All right, uh, voice. Casey, let's uh, tell, the kids, <clears throat> tell the kids what we have. All right, kids, gather around. We have, uh, <laughs> we have some, some pretty cool new tunes that I can speak to you about. We have the new Cloakroom Further Out record, which is a double LP being released by Run For Cover. It's really, really good if you like Cloakroom. It's cool. Like, I don't know. They have an interesting guitar tone. Uh, if you like True Widow or Pedro the Lion, I'd say they're like a weird mashup of the two. Like It's like an emo shoegaze stoner metal band. But none of those... Uh, genres alone really describe them but it's a cool record uh, we also have the Institute Salt LP, uh, EP 12 inch EP from Sacred Bones if you like Crisis they're basically Crisis they rip off the type fi- typeface of Crisis and they definitely sound like Crisis but it's sick um, then we have two new records from Melvin's which are both double LP compilations of two records so we have Melvin's eggnog plus lice all and melvin's ozma plus bullhead we have sorority noises forgettable 12 inch lp from broken world media which is a cool like emo poppy record um my friend cam plays in that band so i have to say nice things (laughs) and then we have the told slant still water lp from broken world this is a cool like emo indie record really interesting instrumentation i saw a youtube video floating around of them playing a song live called parking lots and that style of music isn't normally my thing but they were like really into it and like belting it out you know so i thought that was cool and i always appreciate it when people actually get into it when they're playing uh and we also have a new pre-order available from protagonist the hexus slash gift this gift is a curse split um so that's cool if you want to order that you can do that now and that's all we have for the cool new tunes this week you can check out the other stuff that we have that i didn't highlight if you look on our store very cool very cool and i almost and i almost uh skipped right over tour time but um, I did. Oh, whoa. So, <laughs> Caleb is uh, going to tell us about all the. Uh, we have a lot of tour things happening. So, uh, Caleb, why don't you uh, tell us what's going on with the uh, tours? Uh, sure thing, Rich. But first of all, I, I'm going to need Mark to bring us in again. Come on. Oh, we need a theme. <laughs> we need a theme song. Yeah. Tour time. Beautiful. Caleb, you sound heavenly today. I'm. Y- you're using a yeah, new mic y- y- you like that yeah, yeah. i uh l- last week uh, i didn't sound so good so brought i pulled out all the works for this week <laughs> <laughs> yo caleb well, sounds just as good as his beard looks Ooh, immaculate i'm blushing over here you sound immaculate well the, the uh <laughs> the I mean, tour I, news I, is gonna sound especially good today 
I, I have the most uh, obnoxious setup, but uh, hopefully it's worth it. But yeah, <laughs> all right, well, all right. tell us about it. Yep. So a few days ago, uh, United Blood lineup got announced. So Code Orange, Cold World, Harm's Way, they're going to be playing that. That's, uh, you know, that fest in Richmond, Virginia. So Oathbreaker, they're also just announced a, a little European tour with Cancer Bats, While She Sleeps, and Hundredth. That's going on in April. So check them out. Oathbreaker are amazing live, and it will be well worth your time. Um, Harm's Way, their world tour, is kicking off this week. Um, they're going all over the place. Um, I assume this is for, you know, to coincide with Rust. So they're, um, they're going to North America, Southeast Asia, Australia, and Japan. So y- you have no excuse. Don't miss them. They're everywhere, so... Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole world is going to be in harm's way. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, God, I regret that already. <laughs> oh, jeez, um, yeah. <laughs> um, also, You're doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> um, Code Orange, Harm's Way, and Eternal Sleep are also going to be touring March 13th through the 27th. So, Harm's Way are busy gentlemen. And, um, yeah, so that's it. Um, to keep up to date with all things touring go to deathwishinkcom slash tours very cool uh yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of uh a lot of announcements and things happening this week so that's uh that is good to know so um i'm just happy that oathbreaker is like kind of uh active i know right yeah, they don't yeah, play right? too many shows, but oathbreaker is the best well we don't get to see him too often in the united states obviously because they're yeah. from belgium but um, they play quite a bit of shows in europe so, uh, we wanted to leave some room for, th- we got a ton of questions and, uh, and, uh, through email and Twitter, uh, thank you. That's awesome. We, that's, we, you know, we want to do the show because we want to inform people and, you know, let people know, uh, or, or talk about things that people want to know. So yeah, keep those questions coming. Uh, keep hitting us up on Twitter, email, all good. Uh, Here's the first one. I'll take this one because, you know, <laughs> because it pertains to me, I guess. Uh, yeah. um, all right. So uh, this is Jonathan. This is Jonathan. Uh, he says, hey, fellers, the podcast is always a treat to listen to. You guys give me a good laugh every episode. I understand you guys are into Smash Brothers and other video <laughs> games as well. And when he says you guys, I'm pretty sure he just means me. <laughs> i'm into video games not as much maybe as you yeah 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 um oh yeah he doubts me, he doubts me. <laughs> how would you feel about holding a little tournament for online players in smash brothers and or other games you want to kick people's butts in and involve mini prizes for winners just the thought keep up the great work guys hope to see you at this is hardcore 2015 jonathan oh wait i forgot to say P.S. Mark, sing the cool, the damn cool new tune jingle. Well, Jonathan, your, Done. your dreams have come true. Because Mark <laughs> sang it earlier ha- in the episode, so. Hashtag chicken noodle Mark. <laughs> Hashtag noodles. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jonathan isn't the only one who uh, requested Mark sing, so. <laughs> well, I think I think this is a great idea. Um, I would love to do an, uh, like a tournament, uh, either Smash Brothers or Mario Kart. I think those would be awesome. So I'm going to talk to Jonathan, and if anyone else wants to do it, uh, email us, and uh, I'll. Fig- I don't exactly know how to set it up, so I might need some of your uh, some of your help out there. Jonathan, help you out. Yeah, so help me out with that, and uh, if we want to do one, I'll definitely play people uh, online. Uh, I love playing uh, Mario. <laughs> I love playing. All right, I'm not that good at Smash Brothers, honestly. People kick my ass <laughs> every time I play online. Wait, I think I think Who? you said Smash Brothers wrong. Can you say that again? <laughs> Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers. <laughs> Who do you? Who's your go-to character in Smash Brothers? Well, it used to be Pikachu. Bah, uh, yes. But now in the new version, um, it's uh, Bowser Jr. Word. I'm just. I. I'm just, but you know what? I still suck at it. So yeah. uh, I'm not very good online, but Mario Kart 8, I will literally kick anyone's <laughs> ass so hard. Dude, I'm terrible at Super Smash, so I always just choose Ness to annoy everybody. <laughs> and I at least can, like, get some reactions out of it. Like, yeah, yeah, he's when, kind of annoying, you're right. Yeah, like, so. when I was on tour in Richmond, where we stayed, like, 
everyone at the house is really good at Super Smash Bros. And they kept having us play with them. And it was so embarrassing. <laughs> and, like, yeah, so I don't want to probably be involved with the tournament because I will be bad. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, yeah, so I would definitely love to get that together. So I might need some of your help out there. So if anyone's, like, you know, good at getting that those things set up, let me know. And um, we'll work together to get a uh, the Death Wish Smash Brothers Tournament 2015 together. Or if you want to do Mario Kart, we'll do that, too. So very cool. Um, here's another one, another question. This one's about vinyl subscriptions. Um, I'm sure this has been asked before many times and has been answered before, but will there be a year long vinyl subscription based thing? Thanks. Oh, and this is the person that I literally destroyed their name on the last podcast. Um, I need some help here. Mark Anthony Medina. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) See, (laughs) um, I guess I'll take this one, too. Um, We've talked about doing vinyl subscriptions here. Uh, I just don't... It's difficult because we we don't know what we're going to put out sometime. Like, it's January right now, and I don't know what we're going to... If something will come out in September, or, you know, we know our release schedule for the next, I don't know, three to five months. We know what's coming out then, but, I mean, literally this week, Trey walked into my office and said we're doing this record in June and I didn't know about it last week. Obviously it just, it happened. Like it just, it just came together. So doing a vinyl subscription, it would be difficult because sometimes we just don't know what we're putting out throughout the year until a little bit later in the year. Um, I don't know how other labels handle that. Uh, if there's like a set amount of releases that they're going to send to people, do any of you guys subscribe to any vinyl subscriptions? No. Nope. Yeah, I d- did it once. I did the first run for cover seven inch subscription in like 2011. Okay, so that was a seven inch subscription. So like they were just doing specific seven inches for it. Yeah, they did. They they announced all the bands ahead of time. I think it was like seven or eight seven inches, and it was supposed to come out like <clears throat> once a month for like seven months. Some of them got a little bit delayed, but I ended up getting everything fine, and it was actually pretty cool, especially since. When they were delayed, I kind of forgot about it, and then a bunch got shipped together, and it was like a nice surprise. It came, they came like like a cool box, and they all like got packaged in a box. It was like a screen printed small pizza box. It was pretty yeah. cool. I've seen that box like in record stores and stuff, and it looked really cool. Yeah, there was like a Tiger Shaw seven inch and Self Defense, and Shook ones, and uh, I can't remember who else. Th- that's the seven inch with the the Self Defense. Seven inch with like the women's, the yeah. yes, yeah. <laughs> so I that uh, one's good. So yeah, I heard uh, crime gets you off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell yeah. So yeah, I mean, like, some people do it out there. I we've talked about it. I just don't. I, is there's no plans right now, and you know, I don't want to say there never will be, but um, if 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 it works out, we'll do it. But um, yeah, Rich, I think it comes to a point where people like trust like. For instance, Run For Cover, even if they didn't announce it and I thought it was cool, I probably would have bought it because I like, some people just trust labels. Like, I bet there would be some people out there who'd be like, whatever Death Wish puts out this year, I'll probably be into. And they'll, even if we don't, we can't tell them everything, you know? Yeah. yeah that's yeah, probably can. how it works. I think that's part of the excitement of doing the subscription. I don't know. Yeah, yeah kind of just discovering new things that you might not have, you know, got, you know, if you, if you, you know, individually. Yeah. I don't know, because people sub- subscribe to magazines and they don't know what's going to be in the content of the magazines. Oh, yeah, exactly. you're right. You're right. Well, hey, maybe we should maybe we should uh, open that up for discussion again. So, very cool. Thank you for the question. Um, Mark, do you want to read the next one? Sure. Um, it says, quick question for all of you. How old were you guys when you went to your first show and what bands did you go see? And that's from Matt Andrelchik. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's Andrel Chick. That's right. Um, Caleb, what was your uh, first show, man? Oof, I honestly don't remember exactly. It doesn't uh, have to be like your first like, you I'd know, s- show where you were like classified as an alternative kid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember like I started going to like local shows, like my friends' bands and stuff. Like I'd say around thirteen, fourteen years old. Yeah. Um, and 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. One of the first like big shows I went to was Ozfest. That was oh, yeah, there you go. hell yeah. Black Black Sabbath. I don't Sabbath. think it's what necessarily year? like what your first what year? like hardcore show was, but well, I think that's. I'm assuming that's what he means, but yeah, I don't know. So local shows around 13, 14 years old, and uh, Ozfest. I want to say what year? Oof, I don't know. Black Sabbath played. Slipknot played. <laughs> uh, you know, it was it was at, yeah. it was at the height of just new metal. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. My uh, I, I, I think when I was a kid, it's weird. Like my parents weren't like into music that much so like we didn't like go we never like went to like concerts or anything like that like did did your parents ever like bring you to concerts or anything like that no nope. yeah yeah my so first I, times i think my i think first, i went to go sorry. see like the monkeys is it like play nice. for free that's, like in boston that's awesome i'm pretty sure like that was like my i i think it was them or maybe it was like Damn. a cover band i don't remember if it was it couldn't have been that maybe it wasn't actually them i don't I remember the, but i was like uh, really young but my first like like legitimate like hardcore show i remember this like very fondly because it was an awesome show um it was proclamation american nightmare and anal cunt <laughs> in waltham awesome. yeah at the um vfw hall in at your VF- fucking backyard yeah it, 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 that's that's the thing like i didn't and now it's literally it's literally the point of which i kind of discovered hardcore like i knew a little bit about the bands from listening to kind of like more metalish things but it was like the first show that I was, I was like oh shit this is awesome and um uh seth putnam was in rare form that day so uh <laughs> but yeah i don't I, it it was a it was i don't want to i don't know if it was like one of american nightmares it was one of the early shows like their ep may have just came out on uh, bridge nine so uh, it was yeah, one of their that's very a great early shows, first show so that was awesome that's awesome really it's awesome that i was able to see that and kind of discover hardcore music that way i'm very jealous yeah that's a great first show i know and it sounds like i'm like making it up like yeah i saw american i I believe you (laughs) but like that's like literally what happened which was awesome oh and and to go back to the monkeys i saw the uh the b-52s with my dad in a in a casino (laughs) (laughs) casey what about you um well my first I guess if you're if we're gonna be specific with the wording, my first concert was when my parents brought me to go see ACDC, and I was really young. But I remember it was a cool experience because I thought I was really like cool because they kept like moving the camera so that I was on like the huge like screen or whatever, <laughs> and I was like sing. I knew the word to every single song. And when I was in the parking garage, like people came up to me and were like, "Oh, you're that kid that was on the screen, like singing all the songs." And I was like in like elementary school, so I was like, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And then the <laughs> first awesome. like, yeah. And then I went to high school and I had a class called American Government with this kid who was like vaguely alternative, but I didn't know like, I was like, "Oh, this kid kind of looks like he's different. Maybe I'll like be friends with him." And then I talked to him. And he told me about how he was playing a show with his band at this place called the Sad Cafe in Plastow, New Hampshire, which is like (laughs) this totally, totally lame venue. And um, I didn't know that there were like shows that happened outside of like arenas. So I was like, what the fuck? Like, that's so crazy. And I went to it and I saw his band play. It was this band called The Wake Up Call. And then this band called A Breath Beyond Broken. And A Breath Beyond Broken went on to be My Fiction's who went on to be all of my best friends, roommates, and bandmates. So it's really weird that when I was 14 in 2007, I saw, like, my best friends, but they were playing in this band, and I thought they all looked like assholes. <laughs> and I was like, they fucking suck. But I uh, <laughs> That's awesome. ended up being, like, really good friends with them. And I don't know. It's kind of interesting, but it was a, it was a goofy first show. But I remember thinking it was, like, the craziest thing. And it wasn't, like, cool hardcore bands. It was, like, bad metalcore and, like, bad pop punk. But that was my first, like, show and concert experience. Very cool. Cool. Mark, did you... Wait, did you, did you do yours already? No. Do yours, then. Um, my first, like, concert was I saw The Temptations. Uh, 
it was in Lowell, and there was some outdoor like thing where they had free concerts in the summer, and I went, and they brought, and this is, this is also gonna sound like I'm lying, and I promise you I'm not. Uh, I was with like three other people, and it was before like cell phones were, so no one could take a video or anything. They brought like. They had this dude dance in the crowd, and he took, like, eight people on stage just to, like, snap their fingers and dance next to the Temptations, and I was one of them. And then they kept, like, uh, eliminating people who they, they didn't think were good dancers, and then they kept going, they kept going, and I ended up being the last one, and they let me sing the first line of My Girl. I will let you know that it was, like, six people in the Temptations. Only one of them was is alive from the original Temptations. The rest of them were just, like, dudes that were there. That's still so But I so remember cool. singing, like, I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. And I remember just being so fucking psyched. And uh, so that was my first concert. The money, oh, my God. The money I would pay to invent a time machine to go back in time <laughs> and see Baby Mark singing with the temptations i was like 12 is. i was definitely wearing like a bucket hat like a plaid bucket hat or something. <laughs> <laughs> so cool like <laughs> that i got in maine or something I, um awesome and my first like hardcore show was uh i it's, i think it was like 2007 or something i can't remember what year it was but it was uh half heart Verse Soul Control and someone else at the living room in Providence. Um, do you guys ever go to the living room? That was cool. I've heard, I've heard of it. How'd you end up there? Why? Why did you go to the show? Uh, my brother knew about it. He was seeing a bunch of those bands sort of often, and I was, I guess, I mean, 2007 was what eight years ago, but I was 16, so I was a little late to the game, I guess, and. Uh, I don't know, he asked me if I wanted to go one time, and I went, and I remember just being like, what? <laughs> um, but it was great, so I, I have not looked back, I guess. Word. I remember the first hardcore show I went to now, because I forgot that, like, the first show I went to wasn't really a hardcore show, but, yep. like, the first hardcore show, I guess, fake, like, some people might not even consider it that, but the first one I went to was Converge and Doom Riders at the University of New Hampshire, in 2009 which is not even that long ago but that was like the moment when i was like oh there's something different between like this type of aggressive music and like the type that i had been seeing like shitty metalcore but it was cool because i think that show was 18 plus and i wasn't 18 and so i got there and i just went up to the ticket window and said like oh i came like a really really far distance with my friends and they're all inside and i don't want to just like wait outside the whole show so can you like let me in and they let me in but I remember thinking it was so scary when Converge played. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was it was sick. So I remember seeing I don't know what year it was probably around 2007 2008. But Ceremony played the ICC with some other bands, and I remember being legitimately fucking scared for my life. <laughs> I was like up against the wall, like freaking the fuck out. The floor was like rattling with people stomping their feet, and they were just terrifying. I think I remember. And I, I think back, I remember that show. I think that was like Converge and Rise and Fall, right? I think it no, I don't know. I think it, it might have been no, it's actually the fucking poster that's on my wall right now. I think it was the Ceremony Have Art Blacklisted tour that Rain oh. Supreme played and stuff. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. It's big as fuck. I remember being What did you say? I said that show sounds egg as fuck. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. So, <laughs> I remember just being fucking really scared. Yeah. Ceremony used to be really scary when they'd play. Like I saw them at the Cambridge Elks Lodge with like new lows and squirm and shit. And like the whole, it was the upstairs Cambridge Elks and like the whole room was opened up with people like going crazy. And I think someone like tried to throw a table and Garvey slapped that in the face. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a story. That's, that's a story that's been told many times. Yeah. Story well, time with Garvey. <laughs> um, I, it's funny because I saw a ceremony in California I, and I think Violence Violence like just came out. It was at Sound and Fury. True. And um, it was, it was like absolutely nuts. Like it, yeah. it, it was, you know, like they, they were just starting out and like um, people were just kind of discovering them and it was absolutely insane. It was one of the coolest things I've seen at a show. Like just the amount of people that were just going off for a ceremony was just it was yeah. it was crazy. It was it was awesome to be there. So, that was very yeah. Cool. They've always been a really fun band to see. 
I still enjoy seeing them. Yeah, definitely. So um, let's let's move on. We'll do a we'll do another question here. Um, I'll read this one. So this is from Brennan. Brennan asks or says, um, a friend and a friend and I have always talked about starting up a local label, mainly pressing a couple seven inches at first, maybe some comps, then get into full LPs. We are thinking of doing a few splits at first, but some of the bands we have in mind are already signed. Uh, can you explain how bands are signed? Can still have other releases on labels such as splits, and also the same respect. How does the legality of releasing cover songs work? That's a good question. So, um, yeah, a lot of the times it's it's if if a band that is on a label currently wants to release uh, a split on another label or do something else with another label, if it's not if there's a contract involved, uh, typically that stuff will be. Um, included in the contract so like there might be a stipulation that says like hey we can release um seven inches on other labels um and and if the the label and the artist agree to that that's cool a lot of times it's just uh you know hey we're you know bands will talk to labels and say hey we want to do this thing uh with this label and if if everything's cool like it's really just uh yeah sounds great uh because it's always just good for bands to keep releasing things and stay active so yeah doing things like that is uh it's usually just the label and the artist discretion so usually they'll work that out beforehand or sometimes they'll just say hey we, we want to do this and usually it's not a big deal and, and and people will uh you know gladly uh come to an agreement on that so uh it's it's worth it's worth uh exploring if, if you want to say you know, have the band talk to their label and see if, if, they're, if they're cool with it, then yeah, that's that's cool, you know. Um, as far as the cover songs go, uh, it's not, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, what you have to do is to uh, legally uh, release a cover song, you have to go to the Harry Fox agency. Uh, just Google that, they have a website. You fill out a form and they'll estimate how much, you basically have to pay a fee to do that. So uh, it's really simple. Uh, you can just Google that, and like the instructions are right on the site. So, uh, so to legally do that, yeah, you just have to uh, fill out that form and uh, pay the fee, whatever it may be for the song. And it's to whoever wrote the song, so uh, you're you're paying the fee to, or the collection agency that's doing it. So, super simple. I have a, I have a couple things. Even though I I don't actually run a label, but a couple suggestions just based on like what I've seen. Yeah, I I would say maybe start by doing cassettes because i think cassettes are extremely affordable and an easy way to like release some things without a lot of overhead and i would also personally stay away from compilations because i don't think that they sell very well like i feel like a two band split is like the maximum unless they're really popular bands personally i don't know you can do whatever you want yeah that's just what i'm saying (laughs) yeah i agree with that like, when I was in high school, I started, like, a label. We ended up putting out, like, 10, 10 records or so. And, um, like, the first record I released was, like, for my own band. was because, And it's just because, you know, no one else was going to put out a record. So I was just like, I'll put yeah. out the record. And uh, we ended up selling a good amount. So I was able to use the money that I uh, sold for my own band's uh, release and uh, use some of that to go towards newer releases uh and move forward so yeah you definitely want to my, my suggestion would be like start off small don't yeah don't like go all in you know what i mean like you if you're brand new to the whole you know label thing just start off small like find a find a band that's uh like you you know in your in your local area and you know, if they seem popular and you like them and, and people are really into them, like you should uh, see if they want to do something. Maybe they'll want to do a, a seven inch or, um, or, or a cassette, like Casey said. Like cassettes have very low uh, overhead and you can do some pretty creative stuff with them. And uh, people are really into cassettes these days. We, we've seen a, quite an increase in the interest in cassettes. So uh, that's a definitely a good suggestion is consider that. Uh, it's a really good way to just get your foot in the door and 
you know, you don't want to spend every, you know, dollar that you have on something that might not make a return. It's, it's, it's a pretty risky business, obviously. So, uh, yeah, definitely consider that. That's a good, good suggestion, Casey. Thanks. So those are, that's, that's it for the email questions. Uh, we got a few on Twitter as well. Let's see. Let's pull these up here. All right, this one is from Andrew Clark. Oh, and so if you do want to ask a question on Twitter, just use the hashtag AskDeathTalk because we're just going to pull that up uh, before the show and then go through all the uh, questions. So it's just an easy way for us to see them all. And you can send out the tweet whenever you want. So that's a nice thing to be able to do. Uh, Andrew Clark asks... Should I, read the, should I read the Twitter handles? I always like reading the Twitter handles. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Come on. All right. Anyway. So, um, at start today 09, Andrew Clark asks, hello from Qatar. Wow. That's far away. Damn. I forgot that was even in place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what type of recording equipment do you guys use? Asking as a fellow podcaster. Uh, we've done the show a few different ways now. We used to just do it in like my office and just have one mic and we all just like yelled and screamed into it, uh, which got a little (laughs) crazy sometimes. Uh, lately we've been all on our own computers. Uh, I think in, in the, in the biz, they call it a double, double ender. So, uh, (laughs) you sound like such a fucking asshole. (laughs) That's what they call it. I think in in the biz. (laughs) Yeah, uh, so it's basically everyone records their own audio. So right now, we are all talking on Hangouts, and we all have our own mics, and we're recording our own audio, and then everyone sends me their audio, and I edit it all in Logic and uh, make a podcast out of it. So that's what we're doing now. Um, we've done it differently in the past, we, and we actually might do it differently in the future. Um, we're just, you know, we again, we're not like professional podcasters, and we're just... We wanted to do something that we could interact with people that are fans of the label and uh, answer some questions. And just uh, so we want to do the podcast and it's been going real well. So we might change it in the future. But uh, for now, this is what we're doing. Thank you, Andrew Clark. All right. uh, John Rodriguez at Jawscore. Cool Twitter handle. Um, Does Rich have the Fantasy Life DLC? Add some great features, adds some great features and a potential hundred plus more hours of gameplay. Also, congrats! Thank you. Um, no, I do not have that. Uh, I why not? I've already put in like fifty hours to fantasy. Like I'm like like I play that game so much. I don't know if I can handle another hundred hours of gameplay. I have to move on. There's just so many more video games to play. <laughs> cop out um yeah uh father figure he says uh, at heretics fork he's he's uh tweeted us before so death talk is my favorite and i'm glad they used a couple of my questions that's all he said but thank you thank you for tweeting at us that's very cool um oh man this person's name is in a different uh language here the disorder is me oh wow (laughs) You, you win. Um, at Chaos Is Me uh, wants to know opinions on modern Screamo. How does it compare to the classics? Like Page 99, Orchid, Jerome's Dream. Preference? Question uh, mark. Casey, you're, are, <laughs> you are our Screamo expert in the office. All right. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm going to ask you. You're in a, I would say, modern Screamo band. Would you not say yeah. that? Yeah. Are you better I than page so. 99? Oh, dude, without doubt. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I think that those bands obviously are great and they paved the way for other bands that are doing things now. And I think that there was a time mainly when like those bands were existing, uh, when all those labels like Ebullition and Gravity and like all that sort of thing were really like popular. And that was probably the golden era, I guess you would say. And there's definitely like less people who are psyched on it. But I think that there's a lot of modern bands that are doing really well, but they're just not and are comparable because they're building off of what was laid down. But they're not as 
popular just because that's not really the cool thing i think right now like i mentioned lord snow earlier they're great obviously i'm biased but loma prieta and birds in row are really good but i liked them even before i worked at death wish so i don't really care um but like i was i briefly glossed over how richmond has like a pretty good screamo scene like there's this band called cost and they're like i don't know comparable to like majority rule or page 99 and then they're all in a bunch of other bands. There's this band called Swan of Tuanella that's kind of like a, like, Bon Nivire, like, style band, I guess. More melodic and, like, also has, like, some really heavy parts. I don't know. I think that there's a lot of young bands doing cool stuff. There's this new band that literally just, like, released a thing this week called Facility from New Jersey. And they're sick. And they just recorded with Steve Roach from Seisha. And they have, like, a really good demo. And it's actually tight. And I feel like a lot of screamo bands now are, they're cool, but... Maybe because they're not as tight and they kind of are like sloppy and like just like trying to be emotional and not trying to also play well. They don't uh, appeal to as many people, but like there's still some bands that are doing that. Like Facility is really tight and cool. Capacities was a really good band until they just broke up. I don't know. I think that like in any genre of music, there's the forefathers that are legendary and great and they pave the way for everything like, you know minor threat and negative approach for like hardcore punk and then page 99 and orchid for screamo but i think that there's still contemporaries of each genre that are building off of what was laid down that are doing things that are just as interesting and also innovating on what was made so i think that there's a lot of attention that should be paid to that style of music right now but it's not being paid i like Page 99, probably the most out of all those, or maybe Jerome's Dream, if I had to pick from the three, since it also has preference. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to hear, like, you can tell bands are heavily influenced by other bands of a certain genre, but the bands that seem to shine through are bands that have, like, a new twist to it, you know, like, they have, like, this, like, yeah. thing, like, I don't know, uh, uh, just speaking about uh, Loma Prieta, like, they are... Uh, they have this super melodic side to them that is uh, very endearing, and and, and uh, it's 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 one of the things that I like the most about the band is some of those real melodic parts that yeah. you might not hear in a typical you know screamo band where it's fast and uh, pretty heavy you know screaming the whole time you know so I you know yeah. the, every band has like their own sort of twist on the genre so that's what makes them kind of cool you know yeah. And it's cool because there's still some bands from, I guess, that older period, or relatively older, like Rain and uh, Dytra, or Dytra is still a band? Uh, but like bands like that that still are doing it and still making cool music. Cool. Uh, yeah. Very good question. Well, um, that's, uh, let's see if we have one. We might have one more here. We uh, we just tweeted yeah, out before we, we started the Twitter. show. Yeah, so we got some right before we uh, started the show, so... Um, I'll read a few more from here. Um, let's see here. Uh, was con uh, This is from Robert Bla Blaze Hanley at Aries Vale. Uh, was Converge ever approached by a major label in the past? If so, what label and what happened? Um, I don't know. That's I, I literally don't know. Uh, you'd have to ask Jake that. Has Converge ever been approached by a major label? Not that I can think of. But a lot of time has passed in our band, and you know we may have talked to somebody in in the past that that could have been affiliated with a major in some capacity. Uh, ethically, it's not something that has ever interested our band. So um, even if we had that opportunity, we probably wouldn't have uh, used it. Let's listen to dogs. Um, we got one from uh, Zach Butcher, uh, at Zach Butcher 2625 asks, uh, when's the American Nightmare doc coming out? And when will the rest of the curse reissues happen? Um, Yo, that's a question I have, too. Yeah. <laughs> Soon. So, <laughs> the Amer it's closer than you guys think. Uh, it, it, it's been taking a little bit longer than expected. Um, just, you know, things happen, and uh, but it's still coming out. It's still something that we're going to do. So um, I wish I could tell you more right now, but it is very close right now. How about that? Uh, we will. I'm really excited to watch it. 
hopefully we'll be able to announce some information about that in the near future. Uh, in the Cursed reissues, yeah, we've already done one. Uh, Cursed 1, Cursed 2 is coming out on March 24th. And then after Cursed 2, we'll work on Cursed 3. Uh, so uh, it's uh, something to look forward to. So definitely, we'll, those will all be coming out. And um, let's see. Uh, Dysfunctional Harpoon asks... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta see their uh their handle at crooked sparrow okay asks um can you talk about uh provide a window into the at self-defense at touche mori recording session i wasn't there so i can't uh tell you too much about it but i did see some photos that surfaced from the recording session and it looked wild uh there was two drum sets there was uh so many guitars and pedals and amps um so listening to the songs you can uh once once everyone hears them seems like they recorded uh more than one drummer at a time which is really cool uh it's it's a really interesting seven inch uh the songs are really awesome i can't stress that enough uh i can't wait for people to be able to actually listen to them but um maybe jeremy and pat can talk about that in a future uh episode we'll uh we'll tell them to uh bring that up i'm sure they'll want to talk about it so uh but that's that's about it on twitter um thanks again so yeah again so you can email us at death talk at death uh you can use the hashtag ask De- ask death talk and we'll look through it right before the show happens and we'll try to get to everyone's questions um thanks for all the questions that was awesome uh that everyone great questions this, this week, week yeah very good question so keep it up keep uh keep sending us some questions uh but we have a few more things and then we're uh we'll finish up here so uh what are we into this week uh mark what are you into this week i was talking about this before when uh we went to bridge nine for the flea market over the weekend i revisited some older bridge nine releases that i guess i haven't listened to in a long time and I'm a big fan of uh, Half Heart, and I guess I just haven't listened to them in a while. And I've been listening to all of their records and getting into it again. So if there's some reason that you haven't checked it out or something, you should, because you'll probably like it. Uh, Yeah, it's just real good, real fun. Caleb, what about you? Uh, I watched uh, the new Venture Brothers special aired uh, last Monday, and... uh, I'm a huge Venture Brothers fan, and every they do. It takes them a long time to do each season. Of, I mean, it's an animated show, and you know. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. Oh well, you'd probably really? hate it because you don't you don't like no. you don't like good things. But uh, <laughs> oh god, here we go. <laughs> it's it's easily the best animated show on television. Is it on like Cartoon Network or something? Oh, uh, it's on Adult Swim. Rich is that same thing? <laughs> yeah, I it's it's just you know. Um, yeah, it's great. So yeah, they take a long time to do each season. So sometimes they do these specials in between when they're taking a while, and it's uh, it's an hour long special, and it's amazing. I loved every second of it. Very cool. Dean Venture is is basically me. So very cool. I'm into uh, I'm into brunch. <laughs> do you guys like brunch? <laughs> yeah, brunch is cool. Oh yeah, Sunday brunch is like the sickest thing ever. Um, did did you recently have brunch? What? It last the last three weekends I've done brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Rich is officially old. Yeah, Sorry. I am. <laughs> yeah, and this it's awesome. is it. Breakfast is I'm my actually... favorite meal of the day. Oh my god! French toast, pancakes, eggs, all that good stuff. I, I love all that shit. That's great. French yeah, toast so I've been is really fantastic. into it. Last three weekends I've done uh, some sort of brunch. So. I hope the trend continues. <laughs> you don't have to hope. You can decide to eat it every week well, if you we, want. <laughs> you know, I, I either go with my girlfriend or... Uh, Your uh, fiancé. Fiance. Fiance, yes, yes. Um, or we go with a couple of our friends. So uh, I, I guess uh, group group brunch, going with your friends, is really fun. Hmm, that's weird. I, I, didn't, I didn't get my invite. Oh, I said friends. Oh, oh, sorry. I must have misheard. You must, you, you must have misheard that. So, uh, yeah. If um, I'm urging everyone this weekend, take a little bit of time, maybe between <laughs> the hours of eleven and one p.m. 
11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Go 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 do brunch. Rich, do you sip on mimosas? No, see, I don't. I can't do like a alcohol with with breakfast sort of thing. I, some other people do, but I can't do that. So All right, I go sure. strictly. Um, I like orange juice. I with 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 my breakfast. And here's the thing about brunch. I don't actually fuck with any of the lunch items. I go strictly breakfast for brunch. Well, yeah, breakfast is better. Well, some so people you like a, you're you just eating do, a late breakfast. Exactly. Yeah, I am. I am. But uh, it's fantastic, and I'm. I hope to I hope to do lots of brunches in 2015. Oh my! <laughs> it's one of my goals. <laughs> you know, it's an underrated breakfast beverage. Grapefruit juice. 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 Yeah, I don't think I've ever even had grapefruit juice. It's real good. Into it. Yeah. Eh. All right. Anyways, uh, Casey, <laughs> what's up with you? Uh, I actually have another thing i guess that's kind of food related i finally i I don't know finally i wasn't really like planning to watch it longer than the moment that i saw it on netflix but i finally i guess watched mystic pizza which is like this romantic comedy from 1988 (laughs) and it's starring julia roberts who (laughs) let me add looks incredible in this movie best i think she's ever looked so beautiful uh but the movie was so good like i don't know maybe i i i I like like cute romantic shit and i think that this movie really killed it (laughs) it hit home it just hit home for you (laughs) it did like there was this there was this one scene where julia roberts thought that this guy that she was seeing was like cheating on her and she saw him inside a restaurant with another woman and so she was in this truck that in the bed of it had like barrels full of fish and so she backed the truck up to his porsche which was a convertible and she poured all the fish into the convertible because she was like really pissed off at him and in a rage and then he came outside with the woman and was like what are you doing this is my sister and then the sister was like nice to meet you finally and she was so embarrassed but he wasn't mad because (laughs) he he was like he was like this shows that you just care so much about me that you were actually jealous and i was just like oh my god that was so fucking adorable and uh it was a sick movie uh i don't know are you a big julia roberts fan no i i honestly like if someone was like do you like julia roberts even though i have no reason to i would have just said i hate her (laughs) because i (laughs) i don't you know what i mean like it's like one of those people that like is totally like nothing to me and i've i think i've seen like i think i've seen like some 90s movies that she was in that were just like unremarkable roles but I don't know. Mystic Pizza was fucking <laughs> sick. Like it apparently I'm looking her. at I'm like lo- do you hate her? I don't know. No, I think she's no, no. Oh yeah, I yeah. I hate Julia Roberts. <laughs> she was it's so just cool. funny that you're like for no reason I would say I hate her. I don't know. It's like when people like ask I don't I'm I think other people do this, but you know, like someone asks you if you like some type of food and you might not have even tried it and you're just like, Oh, I hate that because you haven't even tried it. I feel like I, I never really tried Julia Roberts, but I said, <laughs> I said that I hated her. Jesus but I, I don't know, I liked it a lot. I'm looking at IMDb right now, and they're giving this movie a 6.2 out of 10, and I have to disagree, because I think it was a solid romantic comedy that deserves a better rating, and I am now, I, am, I fucking hate IMDb. Casey, so. do you, um, are you a fan of the rom- romantic category uh, genre of music? I mean, genre of movie. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Like, I don't think I am. But I also recently saw this movie in theaters called. I'm, I actually am surprised I didn't put this as my like thing that I like this week called "The Girl Walks Home Alone at Night," and it's this like vampire movie. You from saw it. Iran. Iran. What? You saw it. Yeah, I saw it in a at Coolidge Corner. It's been sold out every time I go. Damn it! It's only a fourteen seat theater. That's why. You oh need to yeah, buy it's, tickets. The, it's the screening room. Yeah, yeah. it's sold but out. It's, I I tried to go three times. <laughs> it was so sick. I saw it on Friday, and it had like romantic comedy elements to it that I didn't even think about. But that one, actually, you know what? I think that was better than Mystic Pizza. But that's because <laughs> there were like some really like interesting, cute parts. Like I don't know. There were just parts where, uh, what, like, the guy, like, pierced the girl's ear for her. And it was, like, this really cute, 
like a romantic thing but who does that you know he like pierced it with like a pin or something i don't know uh, i guess i am a sucker for like that sort of thing casey i i'd, I'd pierce your your lobe if you want to <laughs> i learned something you. new uh, every podcast casey's a big I, I, romantic i learned something new myself <laughs> casey's a big romantic uh, comedy fan yeah <laughs> and a and a julia roberts in 1988 fan yeah cool Yo, um, Julie Roberts looks good almost every year, so. Into yeah. It. Is, she, is she one of those actresses who doesn't age? Uh, she definitely ages, but in, like, a good way. Shout out to Julia Roberts, Ask Death Talk, hashtag, send us a question. Yeah, we'll try to get yeah. her on the next episode. If, yeah. if anyone knows Julia Roberts, please have her contact us. Yeah. Or just no, a she... person a person named Julia Roberts. If your name is Julia Roberts, <laughs> let us know, and you can be on the podcast. Uh... <laughs> All right. Well, that's about it, guys. Um, thank you for listening to Death Talk Episode 9. Uh, you can subscribe to our podcast uh, on your preferred podcast app. Just uh, search Death Wish Inc. And you can subscribe on iTunes. And if you're subscribing on iTunes and you like what you hear, make sure to give us a rating. And if you don't like what you hear, uh, go over to the Serial Podcast and give them a one star. <laughs> because they have too many five stars by now, so they really don't need uh, any more uh, five stars. So just just leave a one star on theirs, and you know uh, that should that Fuck should cereal. that should do it for you. Uh, you I can also finish cereal. I hated the ending. <laughs> I didn't know the end. You can uh, subscribe to us also on YouTube, and we put these episodes up on YouTube. So if, if that's the way you want to listen to it feel free that's very awesome and again email us your questions uh death talk at deathwishing.com and if you want to ask a, ask a question on twitter just uh use hashtag ask death talk and if you want to use instagram you can too uh we haven't gotten any of those yet but it'd be really cool to have a video one we'll maybe we can like play the audio on the podcast so uh once again thanks for listening and uh have a uh, great rest of your week and day Later.